your bite-sized daily roundup of the biggest news from the world of film. This is The Daily Reel with Van Connor. Good morning, it's Friday, 29th of January. Walt Disney's animated Sleeping Beauty came out today in 1959. Stanley Kubrick's Doctor Strangelove came out today in 1964. She's All That came out today in 1999. And Black Panther premiered today in 2018. It's also birthday to Heather Graham, Edward Burns, Tom Selleck, and Oprah Winfrey. Here's today's news. In a canny bit of viral marketing, Ryan Reynolds has thrown his weight behind a campaign for destigmatizing mental health, revealing in the process the original plans for Deadpool 3. In a tweet to his followers, People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive 2010 said that, quote, it's critical to have open, honest, and healthy discussions around mental health. The tweet followed on by supporting Bell Canada's hashtag Bell Let's Talk campaign, designed to ease the stigma and fear of openly discussing mental health issues. But Reynolds knows how to get eyes on a tweet and let's slip a doozy. Continuing on, the Green Lantern star said, In case that's not enough, before Disney bought Fox, Deadpool 3 was going to be a road trip between Deadpool and Logan, Rashomon style, for real. Logan is, of course, the civilian name of perennial fan favorite Wolverine, memorably portrayed in Fox's X-Men films for nearly two decades by Hugh Jackman. It's unclear how this would have worked, given Wolverine's poignant and very definitive ending in director James Mangold's Logan, but then it wouldn't be the first time an X-Man had come back from the dead. Or Reynolds could, in true Deadpool fashion, simply be making it up to aid a worthy cause. Either way, with Deadpool 3 now taking place within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which doesn't yet have a Wolverine, it's certain that if that ever was the plan, it's definitively changed now. Deadpool 3 is currently being written by sisters Wendy Molyneux and Lizzie molyneux Logan, and is awaiting a release date. Oh, rub my legs, Mama. Why would I rub your legs? Please, they hurt. They have growing pains. What in the... Why is your hand so tiny again? It's not my hand. Oh, Mary Mother Joseph! That was nice for me. Over 20 years on from the release of Requiem for a Dream, director Darren Aronofsky and star Jared Leto are planning to reunite. Adrift, which comes from Blumhouse Productions, will adapt a short story by the Rings author Koji Suzuki and tells the tale of a fishing boat that discovers an abandoned yacht with a strange distress call. When a deckhand agrees to take lone control of it while it's towed into port, he soon discovers why the rest of his more experienced crew members call it a ghost ship. Leto has reportedly been chasing the rights to the story for around a decade, and pitched it to Aronofsky personally. Whilst the project is a priority for the actor, it still won't begin production for a little while yet, as Aronofsky is currently lined up to begin shooting The Whale with Brendan Fraser in March. About a 600-pound recluse hiding away in his apartment and eating himself to death, who longs to reconnect with his estranged daughter. Meanwhile, Jared Leto can next be seen in Warner Brothers' crime thriller The Little Things, opposite Denzel Washington and Rami Malek. I know I can't change anything that's happened, but but I want you to know that, that I love you and that I'm sorry. And I want you to be happy. So I got your brand new TV set. It, it's going to be delivered in a couple of days. It's from Macy's. Oh. <laughs> And finally, Kong Skull Island's Corey Hawkins has signed on to lead a different kind of boat-based frightener with Last Voyage of the Demeter. The Amblin project will adapt the spine-chilling chapter of Bram Stoker's literary classic Dracula entitled The Captain's Log, which told the tale of the doomed Russian schooner boat which was chartered to carry Dracula's coffin from Carpathia to London, a journey that concluded with only a single stark raving mad crew member left aboard. Scary stories to tell in the dark's Andre Overdahl will direct the project from a screenplay by Zach Olkovich, who actually wrote the script back in 2002. No start date has been penciled in for Last Voyage of the Demeter, but Corey Hawkins can next be seen in Lin-Manuel Miranda's musical adaptation In the Heights, which releases on July the 30th. Listen to them. Children of the night. What music they make.
Available on digital platforms from today is the time travel thriller Synchronic, North Korean assassination doc Assassins, and Ebbs Burnoff's biographical documentary The Capote Tapes. On Netflix from today is the Sutton Who excavation drama The Dig, starring Ray Fiennes and Carey Mulligan, while movie subscribers are from today able to stream the Jehovah's Witness drama Beginning. Movies showing on Freeview today include the first Young Guns on BBC One, Bad Neighbours is on ITV2, Film 4 is showing The Monuments Men, Raw Deal and Sin City A Dame to Kill For, Five Star have got Geostorm and What Lies Beneath on, Sony Movies follow up America's Sweethearts with a Nicolas Cage triple bill in It Could Happen to You, Joe and The Trust, and the Horror Channel are showing Resident Evil. The Sky Cinema and Now TV premiere for today is the all-star Oliver Twist reimagining Twist. This has been The Daily Reel for Friday, January 29th. Have a great weekend, keep it cinematic, see you Monday. The Daily Reel is a Candy Store production presented by Van Connor and written by Calvin Prickett. All information is correct at the time of writing and source links are in the description for each episode. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe on all good podcast platforms or ask Alexa to install the Daily Reel skill for your morning flash briefing. Follow the show on social at Daily Reel Pod and we'll be back every weekday. Until then, keep it cinematic. Cinematic.